a man looking for trouble. What can you see beyond the darkness? When you look beyond the darkness, tell me what do you see? It's your boy T I N Y to the P. Yeah, he's looking for trouble here on Twitch.tv with Crash or Jade or Spyro or Leon Kennedy. Is there a new game to start? Is he doing some art? Maybe knowledge of an 80s children's show to impart? Cause he's antiferous, vigorous, rigorous. He's damn vociferous and arting or Mario Karting. He's very carnivorous. Tiny Peter. Tiny Peter. With a great rate of safe states debating his fate, Peter's greeted by emotes of cheaters when people donate. Give him a yeah. or a and we'll build up the hype and I'll struggle to read half the words that you type. So are you ready to go? Come on, what will it be? Are we gaming or painting or watching dated kids TV? Grab a bite, crack a slight, dim the light, sit tight, cause the stream's about to start and the mics sound right, boy. Tiny Peter. Tiny Peter. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boy. Boy. Hello everyone and welcome to another live stream. How's it going? You alright? Are we all well? Are we enjoying our Mondays? Are we uh are we ready for some gaming? I am. Yeah. Yeah, so's Oh yeah. Billy it's Ray your boy, Cyrus. Tiny Peter, back again with another Monday stream of BG and E. How are you, TP? How was your weekend? Happy Monday, my dudes. Mm. Hope you are having an awesome day. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen, for the bits. I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a stream. I'm having a good day. Um, I had a nice weekend. The weather has improved finally. Summer is sort of arriving as July comes to an end, which is nice. So uh, hey, that's good. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so thank you very much for those bits there. Um, how's everyone else? Who's here in the chat? Make yourselves known. Holler and 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 so on. Uh, 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 sound off. That's what I'm. That's the phrase I'm thinking of. Sound off in the chat. Um, I'm dying in this heat, says Jack Stelkari. I believe last time I streamed, people said. People from various parts of the world said they were struggling with the heat. I mean, it's actually been very hot here for the past couple of days. Anyone else uh, dying in the heat? Jax is dying in the heat. Uh, I think Lord Brotovich, uh was dying in the heat last week because I remember him saying that and I was thinking, oh, is it hot in Germany right now? I suppose, I suppose it would be. That makes sense. Um, Ed, good morning, Peter. How was Ashton's party? Uh, it was very good. Um, I had a lovely time at Ashton's to celebrate her birthday. Um, and, uh, I mean, the weather wasn't actually very nice for that, which was a shame because she, like, bought garden furniture only just, like, recently and she was all excited for garden, garden fun. But, uh, hey, we had a, we had indoor fun instead. So, yeah, that was really nice. Um, I'm in the AC, so less dying, says Cooley Wooly. Well, that's good. It's good to have AC. Uh, it's calmed down in New York, says Stephen. Uh, Adi Pramana says, it's warm, yes. Uh, Lobrotovich says, still warm, yeah, okay. Um, I've been fine past couple of days, but it's suddenly spiked today, says Jack Stelkari. Tide author Dan is warm. Uh, we're all warm or hot. Uh, it's not broiling here, but hay fever season is in full force. Yeah, I uh, have been on and off with hay fever this, this year. Um, there have been some days where I've been really bad with it, and then it's suddenly been like, all right, and then, oh, I'm unpredictable. 
Uh, well, there we go. We're all caught up on weather and pollen, which is nice. I think that's important at the start of a stream. Um, coming to the end of the month now, so it might be time for some uh, some resubs next week, which is very exciting because everyone likes to resub in a tiny Peter Austin stream for some reason. So uh, hey, I'll have the I'll have the checkbook out. I'll have the tally uh, working out who's on 65 months or whatever. Uh, Stephen Scodes has gifted a sub to Jax Delcari. They've gifted, uh, they've given 1244 gift subs in the channel, says Twitch. Well, well done, Stephen, for hitting 1244. That's a bonkers amount. Um, and maybe it'll be a little bit of consolation for Jax, who is melting, but now melting as a subscriber to Triple Jump on Twitch. So that's good. It's going to be 32 degrees C on Wednesday. You'll find me in my freezer. Well, perhaps you won't be around to resub next week, Lobrotovich. That's a real shame. Um, it's been good knowing you, and uh, you know, you know, we, we all. It comes to the the sweet embrace of death. The cold, the nice cold and cooling embrace of death comes for us all one day. So um, you know, in the freezer with you. No, Triple Jump does not condone getting in freezers. Nor does it condone not dealing with heat. Try and stay cool in sensible ways. Um, there you go. Melting uh, and doesn't have to deal with the long Twitch ads. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, no Twitch ads for Jax now being a subscriber. Um, lovely. Well, oh, the mod basement is so far underground it's naturally insulated, says Mr. Black. Yeah, it's like uh, those caves that are like... Being Peter Austin, I've obviously been on a number of different sort of tours through caves in up and down the UK and elsewhere in the world as well. And something that uh, seems to happen quite often in caves, or even I think I went down a coal mine once and I think it was the same there. They say like the tour guide always comes out with the same line. They're like, uh, no matter what time of year, no matter what the temperature on the surface, uh, it's a constant 12 degrees centigrade down here. That seems to be what they always say, you know? Whether it's freezing or a boiling hot outside, it's 12 degrees in the cave. That's that's how it works. Um, so uh, yeah, the mod basement. It's a nice it's a nice 12 degrees. It's been 33, 34 here for a couple of weeks. It's coolie wooly. Wow, goodness me. Well, I better get on with the game because people watching the VOD will be posting in, in the comments saying, skip to seven minutes to get to the game. So we'll do that now. We'll start the game. Uh, hello, Hunter Dylan. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Welcome in to the chat. Um, we don't condone getting in freezers, but we do condone putting old James clones in there. They start to smell if you leave them out. That is true. They do start to smell. I mean, they start to smell if you leave them out and they're they're still alive and active. It's just it's just a Jenkins clone way, unfortunately. Um, no, lovely, lovely scent of James Jenkins. Uh, everyone... Everyone's a big fan. Uh, the Will of Phil subscribed for 46 months. Thank you very much indeed. Um, lovely. Well, let's do it. Skip to 1 hour 30 minutes and 45 seconds for disc game, says Cooly Wooly. Hey, should we try and do that? Should I try and like play the disc game at exactly that timestamp? Imagine if you predicted that. Um, right, I'm going to launch the game. I'm going to switch over to the game here with my little face down in the in the bottom left even though I'm facing that way which even though the game's over there I'm looking that way because I've had to move my face cam to this corner so as not to hide the very important you've got a new email message uh, alert um that's the only reason but hey whatever so play game I can't hear it because it's muted there we go um and we will continue in Ming Tzu's shop. Ah, yes, I remember now. VOD watchers should comment if it's been too warm for them too, says Adi Pramana. You're right. If it's if it's also warm and you're not watching live, let us know. Hello, I'm for Gabler. Good to see you. Uh, hello, uh, Insomnia Aaron. Welcome. This one's just dropped a box off. It's gone down there. Uh, right, so we have um, exposed partly some of the uh, goings on with the with the doms. No, no extra health for Double H. Absolutely not. He does not get any PA ones. He doesn't need them. 
I don't think I've. Well, I have. I have had my companions die a handful of times, maybe, but no, it's fine. So we've um, we've done the slaughterhouse uh, thing. We've taken some photos, tried to expose people. Some people are starting to rise up. Iris, peace. Uh, Shawnee and Iris equals peace. And there's an Xbox logo there. That's good. I like the Xbox logo. Xbox equals peace, everyone. Um, and uh, we've discovered that our Uncle Page, Pigman, uh, we he's been taken by the the Alpha sections for one thing, but uh, more to the point, he is now on the moon, and he is also the. They call that a protected district. I just let it fall to ruins. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's also the leader of the yeah, Iris network. We can sneak through. Can I kick this still? Or is it only for pushing? Okay, no, I can't. Can't kick the locker. Um, so we need to get up to the lunar base, and we do have a spaceship, but it can't go into space. It's a it's an atmosphere ship at the moment. Um, and in order to get a stellar motor, that is a stellar motor, mate. We need to uh, earn enough pearls, basically. So that's what we're doing now. We're going on a assorted pearl hunts. Um, There's something going on over there. I'm gonna go have a look. Be careful. I'll stay here. Um. Yeah, this one's. This is a weird one. Just a fairly, fairly straightforward puzzle. Uh, you follow the conveyors. Don't get hit by crates. Um, so yeah, we need to collect a whole bunch of pearls now, um, so that we can buy the stellar motor. We need about 25 or 30 in total, maybe 30. We do have a lot already, actually, but um, so uh, it's kind of now just pick and choose which little pearl-related side quest you want to do because you don't need to do them all in order to get enough pearls. Obviously, you get pearls for taking the animal photos as well, um, and then there are these areas. Oh yeah, I've come around in a circle here, I think. There are these areas uh, that the Alpha Sections have cordoned off in the city and they're using as part of their... their bad stuff that they are doing. Uh, uh, no! Oh no, hang on. Oh, there we go. Otherwise I'll push you into the laser. Uh, and they all have pearls in. So there's now various areas in the city we can go to and get one or more pearls. See, we're going for that one right now. An Aramis pearl, black market currency. Oh, I left it too late. Or did I? No, I made it. Um, not sure what's in these cases. Not sure I want to know. There's low biological activity detected, which is a bit dark. Um... Nearly there. So it's just a it's just a little jumping puzzle, this one really. Well not even a jumping puzzle, but there you go. A, a navigation puzzle. Uh, but we've got the really good one to do, um, because the governor in the cutscene at the end of the last uh, live stream gave us a star shaped key, which allows us to open star shaped buttons and gates. So we've got 27 pearls already, so we don't actually need that many more, but uh, we're going for 100% today. 106%. So uh, I say today, I don't know if we're I don't think we'll finish today quite. Um, there was some kind of weird traffic going on with some cases and a pearl. Uh, so we're going to go for all the pearls anyway, but uh, yeah, we only need a few more to actually get the stellar motor, which is good. Uh, so here is the big one. This is the main reason that you get the star button uh, thing. Tommy would be music. You, you spooked me for a minute there, saying TP, TP, TP in the chat, like something really urgent was happening. I thought maybe no one could hear anything or something like that. Whatever uh, you do, don't let them see you. They will have no pity. 
Shawnee really is like a melody in my head. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, we can only go this way on our own because this lift is operated from the outside, just like all good lifts. No, just saying hi to Some Will Be Music. No, that's fine. Thank you. Hello. Some will be music, some will be music, some will be music. There. That's, okay. that's three in return for your TPs. Peter, 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 says Lord Rushford. Your back, Miss Jade. Team Triple TP. Yeah. Uh, so, this is one of my favourite... I think this is my favourite segment in the game, or it's amongst my favourite segments in the game. This is uh, a hovering laser thing. If the alarm is raised, these things will instantly kill us. So basically you have to do this bit without being seen at all. Um, but I think what I liked about, what I like so much about this is I, it, I still remember sort of how I felt the first time I did this. And... Um, I mean, it certainly it, it it ends in a very cool cinematic moment, which any of you who've seen me play this game before or anyone else play this game before will know what what that is. Um, especially when you account for the time it was made, it really was quite quite special. Um, oops! It gave me a little scare there. Actually, I I walked a bit too fast and he saw me. Uh, but even before you get to the fun cinematic bit. I found this bit really interesting because I don't think I'd done any of the other uh, of these little alpha section areas in the city uh, when I first came to this one. Uh, the first time I played this game I'm talking about now. Um, and to suddenly realize like, hey, we're, we're in the middle of the city, which is supposed to be a relatively, you know, peaceful hub area. Um, and suddenly there's all this like alpha sections presence and there's, you know, I'm doing the stealth stuff that I normally do in in spooky locations that are infested with like Dom's monsters and things, but no, this is just like. Oh, does he turn around? Are they hearing me jog? They're not supposed to be able to hear you jog. Maybe he was just on a, a, a pattern where he, he turns around and I just uh, timed it badly. Um, I don't know. I need to. I need to keep an eye on him next time. Make sure he's not turning around. They're just hearing me as I walk at normal speed, which they're not supposed to. Is this a glitch? Can I leave? Hmm, okay. Well, I might have to walk like this then, which is fine. I don't think they're hearing me when I do this. Jewe Goliath says, good evening, Peter. Hello, 52 months on a 52 month streak. Fantastic. Why do they have an arm sniper? An arm sniper? Who's got an arm sniper? What's an arm sniper? Um, yeah, Dom's monsters as opposed to Sub's monsters, indeed. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm gonna go. Make sure I'm going sneaky here. Because it did shock me when that, that this guy who's walking saw me the first time. Because I thought... I wasn't quite in his eye line, but maybe he just heard me jogging. I need to be creeping along like this. Yeah, and that guy's not turning around either. They're definitely just hearing me when I'm doing a light jog. But, you know, whatever. Uh, so, there's a guy here. Just need to wait for him. Wait for this guy. shouldn't have to actually crawl along like that, but that's fine. Okay. Is the guy at the back moving at all? No, I don't think he is. Okay. Well, that's good, because we can just do that. This is a fun bit as well. There's a guy walking round and round in circles in there. And uh, you have to make sure that you're not going past the window when he is. Um, the one that... Oh, the one that one shot kills you when you're caught. Uh, why is it an arm sniper, though? What does that mean? 
It's just a little hovering. It's this thing in the on the left. I don't know if you can really see it. It was just in, in shot there. There. That thing hovering on the very top left of frame. Oh, it's only bobbing into... There it is. <laughs> uh, they're just uh, little flying guns. That's what they are. Big flying guns, actually. But yeah, so I mean, even that that area alone is is kind of interesting, um, given that it's you know an area in the city that is infested with guards. seen me. I might just leg it, actually. Yeah. If I stand too near the doorway, a laser might get a line of sight on me. Okay, well, there's a bunch of pearls. Loads of them. We've got more than enough now to buy our motor. Oh, I thought it was a soldier with a Mega Man-style arm cannon. Ah! No. No, it's not. Little flying gun. But now's the cool bit. And I gush about this every time. This is the third time I've played this game in some form or other on stream. And I gush about it every time. And, you know, by today's standards, it's it's nothing super exciting. But back in 2000 and whatever the heck, 2005 or something, uh, this was pretty wild. You know, where this is long before your Uncharted's and, and similar such games. Um, Lost sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, it's, you know, it's a bit just, it's like a Crash Bandicoot level, isn't it? You're running away, but, you know, you've got your camera cuts, you've got the, the music, you've got the people running after you, you've got the cars driving back and forth down, down the bottom. The slow-mo, you know, it's definitely, it's more cinematic than Crash Bandicoot running away from a polar bear, I would argue. I don't think that's a particularly uh, wild thing to say. Whoa, look at that! And it becomes a side-scroller and the shit appears and says, show no mercy. Stuff's blowing up. I'm running out of road. What's gonna happen? They're gonna catch me. No! He's got you. Don't break up the team. Carlson and Peters, page 823. A lovely cinematic moment. Let them In a go. game from the early they noughties. To an even larger prize. We made it. He's still holding on to us. Uh, right. Okay, well. Head into the Akuda bar. Let's uh, let's do the front end games while we're here. We'll do. We've got a disc game because he's still got. He's got a second pearl up for sale. It's on his head. Um, so, hard mode disc game now. Can I do it first try? Now do some serious playing. I'm warning you, I've been practicing a lot. Try hard. Uh, bet a thousand against the pearl. Oh, oh my god, he just put like seven discs through. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna get this first round on me. I lost. There we go. Can I do it? Oh, nearly. Now you get a bonus uh, disc game in this version of Beyond Good and Evil. Because normally, in, in the classic version, you would, uh, there's, there's this uh, chest here. And um, 
you try and get into it and it's got a code on it. And the way that you used to be able to get into this chest was you would head to a save point and uh, it won't even show me actually, but you would go to the load and save menu and on your save file, there'll be a string of like uh, letters and numbers at the very bottom and it would say internet code. And it was like this multimedia puzzle where you would go to the official website and you would input the code and it would spit back a four digit code that would work on the locker in your save file. Clever little bit of stuff. Um, but this being a, a re-release of the game, I don't think they wanted to, well, they don't have that infrastructure in place necessarily. They could have put it in place, of course, Ubisoft. It's not that much to uh, host a website, but I guess they thought it's not future-proof, is it, to always now have to host a website so that this chest can be opened. So they've implemented a different way that you get that code, which I guess will be uh, become apparent when we um, leave the Akuda bar. Uh, so I don't think on this save file, I've done Z4M5, uh, no I haven't, so yeah, that's how you get into this one, Z4M5, if you walk down to his table he'll cover it up with his arm so you have to view it from afar, but hey, the pearl is for the iris network. Sorry, Rufus. I may seem a little pushy, but Hillis needs this more than you do. Indeed. It's fine to steal from people if you work for uh, a terrorist organization. Uh, right, let's head through here. I think we've got this guy's ticket already, haven't we? Oh, no, we haven't. Uh, can I do anything for you? I don't think so. But maybe take this ticket for me, will you? What is it? It's the code for one of the Alpha Section safes where they stop what they've stolen from the Hillians. Do you know where their safe is? It's in a shared fountain square on your right. All I wanted to do was feed my family. I never should have taken it. Before I could even use it, I find myself all alone. They took all of them away from me. You're not alone. Be brave. And if you say the Iris Network password to this guy... Yeah, if you stick your neck out, all of your loved ones get taken from you. Don't talk to me anymore about the Iris Network. I once believed in what they stood for, but that's over now. As we will see very shortly, the uh, alpha sections and the doms are very good at tearing apart families and ruining lives. We've seen that, you know, throughout this playthrough, but uh, it really... The chickens come home to roost for Jade very very shortly. Uh, Z4P7. Okay, we'll use that in a moment. Now, here is a special chest that was not in the original version of the game. As you can see, it contains some of the interesting treasures that we have seen on a previous uh, stream. So I will be doing the full treasure hunt uh, in today's stream as well. So that's brand new content for those of you who are already familiar with this game, but have not played um, the the remake, the uh, re what remaster? Yeah. Um, so that'll be some new stuff for you if you're interested in the story and the universe and the sequel. Um, oh, we've got an email. I wonder what this could say. Hey, Jade, if you're interested, I put a ticket up for the chest behind the table. You'll never get this one, though. I've been practicing day and night. You ain't getting even one disc through. All right, let's just go and flip and do it while we're here. <laughs> Because then I think that's the very last thing we need to do in the Akuda bar. Uh, I can refresh your memory about this. Um, apparently there's a nice little package of pearls at the top of the volcano in the crater. That's all I know, but it's no joke. So Mo has given us a tip off. He says he's too old now to be going on adventures, but uh, we can do it. I'm not betting any more pearls against you. You're too good for me. Uh, 500 against my ticket. Oh, there we go. That's through. Can I get? Can I get it into? You yeah. win. Remember when I used to struggle with the disc game? When I uh, 
back in the days when I was emulating. Uh, C6, F6. Yeah, I do. Uh, right, C6, F6. Uh, oops. C6, F6. EZ, PZ. Uh, and in here is an M disc, which allows us to play the disc game on the go if we really want to punish ourselves. Um, I think when I first saw this in the remaster, I thought, oh, there's some new features on here, which I didn't know about. But I think they were actually always available in the original. So there's a palette swap option. So if you press circle, you can actually choose which disc to control because normally it just cycles through them automatically. So you can enable that. And then it says player one human. And then underneath there's player two computer and you can, oh, unbeatable. And you can select a difficulty. But it almost implies that player two could also be human. And I don't know if you have like maybe two controllers plugged in, you can play multiplayer disc game. I don't think you actually can, but uh, oh, variable power as well. No, I'm not gonna. If we have time at the end, maybe I'll do it. I'll try and compete against unbeatable difficulty disc game, but not right now. Um, I've got my pearl detector. Ah, yeah. See. I was wondering whether there are some pearls in here, whether I've been in here yet, and I haven't. So let's go in. It's another one of these alpha sections. Aha! I think we found the way in, Miss Jade. <gasps> alpha sections areas. Um. The one, two, three, push. Basic exercises, page two. Indeed. No, it's not moving another inch. Okay, well, I'll it's a go. District blocked by the alpha sections. Be careful. All right. Okay, we'll catch up further on. This is a pretty quick one, I think, if I remember rightly. Um. <gasps> oh, I think I was clear of that. It seemed a bit unfair, but fine. Oh. Hook. You can actually, as soon as these start doing the turn off animation, you can edge through them like that. So if this, you can actually touch them. As long as they're powering down, they can't hurt you. Oh, it's going to get me. Nah, it's fine. They time it so that it, as long as you're quick, it won't get you. I like how uh, often, in not just in this game, but in, in all sorts of games and films like this, these laser grid things are set up so that, like, it is possible to get past them. You know, why not just set up a series of lasers that completely block off any sort of entrance? And, you know, I know why, because it wouldn't make for a fun game if you couldn't get past the laser puzzle. You'd be stuck. The story would not progress... Oh, whoops. The story would not progress any further. Um, I need some delicious K-Bups. Can I eat K-Bups while I'm hanging off a ledge? Yes. Yum yum. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, okay, who's who designed this? Oops. Didn't see that one. <laughs> right. Um, can I jump over that? Or do I climb over? Can I? Yes, I can. Unhook is such a funny way to describe that. It is, really. It's a bit strange. Let go would be probably what I would say. Over Nothing's over oh, here. Boy. It's all right. Just relax. Oh, these guys don't have tanks on their backs, so I can't... Can't take them out. That would be like not monologuing your entire evil plan to the hero. It just wouldn't be right. Yeah, indeed. Oh! Quick, before the laser turns on. Keep moving. Okay, here we go. Um, so, I happen to know that before I jump out of there, I want to... 
crawl along here. I wonder how I'm doing for animals, by the way. I wonder how many more animals I've got left to do. So you do that, and that turns off some of the lasers. Otherwise, you can't get out. There you go. Unhook. And some pearls. Designed by the same person who designed the Death Star in A New Hope. Yeah. Yeah, maybe an Iris Network person has infiltrated the Alpha sections and they've put a little bit of... Um, they put a weak point into the design. I'm going to bonk this guy. There we go. Because otherwise, I've pressed the button. Oh yeah, this door closes. Seems to get there quick. Oh yeah, this is fun. Oh, well, I mean, that's not fun. Um, but if you don't sprint into the lift, this is a, you know, another kind of unique little way of challenging you. And there's visual cues. In fact, I talked about this in the in the first, I think in the first live stream. I noticed this in the remaster. I don't know if it was, it was probably always the case, but... Um, what they do here is very clever. I mean, it's so clever that you don't even realize it to begin with. But uh, above where each guard is standing here, there is a light bulb just it, it, it built into the wall. It's just a light fitting in the environment. And that then casts shadows on these boxes that are on the lift. And therefore, that shows you if I'm in this exact shadow, the person who is standing directly under that light source doesn't have a line of sight to me. So it's just a visual cue to say, hey, Stay in these shadows, and you can't be seen by, you know, that guy. In fact, there isn't a light above his head, but sometimes you do actually see the lights. Um, and, of course, you've got the little ladders underneath that give you a, a bit of warning that there's about to be a ledge there, which is, uh, you know, another nice touch. See, there's a light above that guy. Oh, and you can see the shadows moving around. So you just stick in the little shadowy spots. I mean, you could... It's not that you would you would still be able to work out. Oh, I need to be on the left side of this box because of the man on the right on the right side. You know, you'd, you'd work it out without the shadow cues, but it's uh, just a bit of nice design. You know. All right, let's give him a bonk. Considering I a box of K bups recently, I seem to not have a great deal of health. Anyway, whatever. Double H, there are tons of alpha sections in the subsoil of Hillis. Better not stick around here much longer. Uh, this vending machine, I think, is the one where you get um, Double H's uh, Alpha Sections costume from. Let's put that back on now, shall we? Let's. Uh, oh, is that a free box of K-Bubs? It is. Very nice. Uh, come on, let's get you. Let's get you dolled up. Uh, yes. Uh, and we'll give him the fancy hammer as well. And we'll put Jade in my favourite of her bonus costumes, which is uh, Pirate Jade. I like Pirate Jade. And we will, yeah, we've got our energized die, Joe. We've got the pirate gloves. Great, everyone's looking fab. Uh, right, off we go. That's nearly all of the pearls in the city. We've got, um, we've got to use that ticket that we got from that guy, that goat man, the sad one who was in the. Uh, he said right hand side, didn't he? Um, in here, is it? Shed, yes. Rats. Okay. Oh, uh, I don't remember. Um, Alpha section's ticket. Z4P7. Oops. Uh, Z4... P7. 
the seven. Um, there are some little bugs here that take the star curse away. I think I've already photographed them. Yeah, I have. There we go. So that's it. That's just a single pearl for speaking to that guy. And I think, I think that's everything we need from the city. Let's check the map. Oh no, there's still a couple of pearls around. Oh, there's one. I think one of them might just be to buy from Nori here. Yeah. Hi, Nori. Let me scan my. Oh, and there's a PA1 as well. Let's get that. Free health uh, top up. Bought from Nori. Very good, very good. And potentially we've still got one pearl left. Um, yeah, there. Where is that? That's off Fountain Square. Oh, is Ming Su selling another pearl? Is that what that is? Is that Ming Su's? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, and then we're done in the in the city. We'll never really need to come back, actually, assuming I've got all the animals that live here, which I think I have. There we go. That's the city complete. So next, um, we can maybe go and do... What should we do next? I'm going to head home. In fact... What's the, what was the latest with the beluga? Have we actually put the thing in the beluga yet? Is the beluga flying around somewhere? Mama Ghost, Slaughterhouse, da, 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 uh, Factory, City, Black Isle. Have I got the Beluga yet? I've done so much, um, so many, so many runs of this recently, I can't remember how much we've done. I'll go and see if the Beluga is here. Probably not. I mean, probably, I probably haven't got it yet. Um, we definitely opened the, ah, oh, there she is. Yeah, we opened the, the hanger, I knew that much, because I've got the knife in my inventory, but, um... In fact, I may not have even bought the... So, we've got one of these that needs to... Oh, have we? Have I even picked it up? Yeah. It's just not giving me the option. Hang on. Wait, no. What? Oh, no, I don't... Hang on. It should be on the desk. Hang on, what's going on here? I hope we've not glitched the game. <laughs> so, what I need to do... It's not in there, is it? No? Oh, that one is there. It's just really dark. I couldn't see it. I was a bit worried there, because I was like, hmm. I need to put two of these into the beluga. And one of them we haven't bought yet, so we'll go and buy that in a second. But I was like, where's the other one? It should be on the desk, and it's not. And it's not in my inventory. We're in trouble. Um, but no, we're fine. Uh, did we finish all the looters? No, we've not done that. We've got some hovercraft races to do as well. Um, so all sorts of side questy pearl stuff to do today. Just come and see the kids. See if they're saying anything interesting. We've got... No, I think we're... Uh... I think we're caught up. In fact, just while I'm here, let me check my animal detector. Got all the animals. Okay, well, the kids are here, Wolf's here, everything is fine. So I'm going to go and buy the other stabilizer that I need from Mama Goes. And everything will still be fine. Don't worry, why are you looking at me like that? In we go. 
Why why are you looking at me like um like as though buying the other flight stabilizer is the trigger for uh, a really sad and tragic thing that that might be about to happen? Why are you looking at me like in that exact specific way? Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you doing that? Mamago. Okay. Um. So flight stabilizer. Oh, so I did need. A lot of pearls. I still don't actually have enough pearls. You know, I was saying, oh, I've got my 30. I can buy my stellar motor. Well, I can't. Because I've only got 25 left. I thought I bought the other stabilizer at this point. But anyway. So that's in our pocket. We've got to drive it back with the hovercraft to the ship and stick it in the, the other port thing. And everything will be fine. I don't know what that explosion noise was. It could have been that. Oh the lighthouse! They destroyed it! Oh the, kids. the kids! Quickly, Miss J. There still may be time. Uh, in an earlier version of this game, the alpha sections were still wandering around at the lighthouse when you get out of your hovercraft. There aren't actually any people on foot here now, uh, in the in the final build, but you used to have to like sneak past some guards, I think, or fight them. The door's closed. What's been going on around here? Ah. I think the kids might have closed the, the hangar. Or it's got some sort of failsafe in it. No, 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 no! Oh my god, the entire building Hello? is just gone. Ben! Yeah! Careful, Miss Jade. The Alpha sections may still be there. Double H! They've taken the children! Anybody here? Uh oh. They're all gone. And the whole thing is just rubble. Not just the men, but the women and the children, too. Woof. Woof made it. Yeah, he's sad, though. It's a sad dog. Sorry, everyone. To give you a sad dog on today's Monday night stream. I know how you are. You tried to help them. You told yourself that you wouldn't let them come to any harm. That you'd be there to protect them. I know, boy. This is a metaphor. But that isn't what actually happened. The kids are gone. She's not telling the dog off. You, you couldn't do anything. She's cross with herself. You're, you're here, alive and well. Who do you think you are? Did you think you'd actually be able to make a difference? Yeah, woof. Why didn't you save the kids, woof? You were wrong, boy. Oh, Double H. And utterly wrong. There's nothing anyone can. I love how he's dressed as an alpha section. <laughs> Anyone can do. Oh man. We must go now, Miss Jade. It's over, Double H. Finished. They're still alive, Miss Jade. Paige, the kids, they're all still alive. He's right. He smiles. That's about the only time he smiles in the entire game, actually. It's a bit weird seeing him smile. Uh, right, okay. So, we're we're opening up the, uh, the hangar again. Because we're ready to sort out the, uh, the beluga. Oh, before we go, very, very important information. 
the otter who lives on top of the lighthouse survived and is easier to photograph from this position. Look at him, he's absolutely fine. Arguably a bit too happy about what's gone on, but yeah, thank goodness, eh? Oh, there's Wolf. Right. So we will stabilize. Oh, he's running. D B U T T D butt. Oh wait, hang on. It's not over yet. <gasps> Combat. see these very often in this game. There's only two encounters with them. This one and uh, I think on the way into the slaughterhouse. But they're, they're quite quite a cool little design. They're not that easy to fight though. Right, there we go. Take the money. Not that we really need it. We've got loads. We've got 14k. Right, let's sort this ship out. And then... We can start the treasure hunt. I know there's a the pressing matter of the children who've been taken and sent to the moon, but in the meantime, we're going to do some treasure hunting. <laughs> there she is. You can actually press this button again and just close the hangar door whenever you want to, if you want to keep your beluga secret, which is what we should be doing, really. Um, you, can, you can shut the door whenever you like. Surely we shouldn't leave Woof behind in the destroyed lighthouse, says Lobrotovich. But he can always eat the otter if he gets hungry. Um, right, up we go. So we now have a ship to fly, which is very cool. I think I said, didn't I, on the previous stream... I've never been a huge fan of the Beluga's design. I like the main body of it. I like the big round window at the front. I think that's kind of cute. It's a bit Wallace and Gromit looking. It's got all the rivets around it and stuff, but um, I think the, the thrusters are a little funny looking. I'll still be really excited if we see it in Beyond Good and Evil 2, though. It's still the Beluga, you know? Now I want a ship and put bull horns on it and call it the bull ship. Well, you might want to put bull horns on your ship. How about... Oh, full alert, because we've got a vehicle upgrade. So obviously the Doms the Doms have been informed that Jade and Double H have upgraded their vehicle again, so it's time for an attack. Uh, but, more importantly, while we're in combat, we head to the Beluga. The Beluga has cosmetics as well. This is the standard Beluga. There is the Mamago Beluga with a horn on the front. The bullship. And even a Garda version from Beyond Good and Evil 2. Um, so we'll, we'll have the horn for now. Have you got the horn for the Beluga? Um, Fire. But yeah, quite fitting really that you can do a Garda skin. Given that that's the... The mothership that Jade's family fly around in the upcoming prequel. Hey, he won't stop wiggling around. Keep him in your sight. He's nearly dead. Yeah, got him. 
cool if you could land on here. But you can't. Um, so the hovercraft, as you've seen, has attached to the uh, to the beluga. In fact, it's kind of cool that you could mix and match your vehicle skins if you wanted to. Um, but you can, at any point, if you're not moving too quickly, just detach uh, with that button. Um, and then reconnect and fly away, as you like. Um, so there are two of these, I think. Two different ones. Um, okay, we got that one. Maybe, the, maybe it's just the same animal. Uh, yeah, what I can do is, I've got my animal detector, so I can see what we're missing. A couple of things all located there. Oh, and the, the, the old fisherman's tail as well, which is just here under those ripples. I've never photographed this from the sky, actually. Wait for it to breach. Ah, it's a nice wide angle of that creature. I've never done that before. Great, I can start a backup. Uh, right. So, you may or may not remember, depending on whether you were present at a previous stream or have watched the VOD, there was a chest in the Beluga hangar, which was not in the original game. And in it, there was this knife. It's Nox's knife. Nox being the sweary monkey from the Beyond Good and Evil 2 trailer. This is a reference to a game that's not even out yet. Um, and on the back there is a code, and also with it was this. That's a picture of Black Isle, if you know your uh, your Hillis skyline. And on the back, there's a little piece of the, the Black Isle map as well, which tells us exactly where we need to go within Black Isle. Um, and, uh, oh, in fact, these goggles were what was in that chest, actually, G6, J4. So, we now go to the Black Isle in our ship. Uh, well, not in our ship necessarily, just in the hovercraft. Um, and we're going to do the Beyond Good and Evil 2 treasure hunt. Which is fun. It's a lovely little feature. So, it did appear like there are a couple of animals... Ah, uh, yeah, see, I'm missing one animal there. Not sure what that is, but we'll we'll get it. Maybe it's the Tirola Max. Maybe I didn't take a photo of it. I don't know. Uh, but we'll run in. With double H. Huh. I wonder if he's got any dialogue about this mine here. Have you already been here? No, Miss Jade, but I heard the Iris Network used to test their future recruits here. Oh, that's cool. Apparently the final test was a combat against a vulgar slug. Yeah. I did it. That was me. That's a fun detail. Right. Um, so. We just need to run down to... I know where it is. It's... Uh, down where Paige gets his spanner from, which is here. Um, in fact, no, this is not where Paige gets his spanner from. I'm wrong. That is where the chest is. It's where, the, where he gets his spanner from, but that isn't that place. It's up this bridge. Anyone in the chat um, not aware of uh, oh. not seen the uh, the things that we get with the treasure hunt? Some of you may have may have played this or may have seen a video on YouTube or something, but uh, who who doesn't know what we're what we're in for here? Right here we go. This is chest number two. So, we go to the goggles that we got out of chest number one. We have a look-see. G6J4. Oh, 
I love that they added this. It's such an interesting little... Well, it, it's interesting if you're into the, the lore. I mean, it's, it's not a super complex bit of extra content compared to some of the stuff you get in other games, but still... I like, I like that they did this. So, the next chest uh, is in room one of the Akuda Bar. I showed it to you earlier, if you remember. And there's a map of it. Box of K-Bops. Um, a lovely um, dream catcher. With a code on the back, T6S4. And another M-Disc. I just hope we get another email, says Lorbrotovich. We get something a bit better than an email, actually. In fact, while we're here, I will do email condition number one. Because um, that does take place here, and I've not done it yet. So, And I think I have to go that way anyway, if that's the monster I've not taken a picture of. So this is about Yashan. Which is interesting um, that it's Yashan. I'll tell you why later. Remember the first time Jade put on that pair of goggles Yashan gave her page? They were too strong for her poor little eyes, so she kept bumping into things and mistaking you for Nox. I was so thankful for Yashan, my first mate, for keeping the guard a ship shape and keeping you lot in check. We didn't always see eye to eye and sometimes butted heads. She questioned my decisions and was never afraid to speak her mind. But her loyalty was stronger than Titanium, a pirate warrior never backing down. Jade was so scared of Yashan at first, but she quickly saw past the hard shell. She came to admire her and look up to her. For her confidence, her conviction, little Jade. her devotion Tiny to Jade. Us, her family. Tell Jade how she pushed herself to be just as strong. How her grit and determination come from her. How Yashan would make her practice her combat skills over and over till there was no weapon she couldn't master. <laughs> Jade had the bruises to prove it too. And you and me both worried, but we had no reason to. Jade should remember that. Yashan gave her strength and the will to fight when there's no other choice. So this is who taught and Jade Paige, to fight. You know as well as I. We did all we could to keep Jade away from that fight. Now that character, really, this is like probably the most intriguing thing about Beyond Good and Evil 2 if it ever actually comes out. In the trailer, that character is referred to as Shani, which you know, I guess is like a diminutive, it's like a nickname for Yashan, Shani. And it's literally spelled Shawnee, but without the U. And it's like, that's got to be on purpose, right? They could have called th that character absolutely anything, but they basically called her Shawnee. So, Jade takes Shawnee's name as a nickname. I mean, it could just be as simple as that. But then why do Dom's monsters, whenever they interact with Jade, why do they call her Shawnee as well? It's all very interesting. And I don't know if... So, it, in, in like the... The trailers that we've seen and some of the like developer content for Beyond Good and Evil 2, she was always referred to as Shawnee. Shani, sorry. Always as Shani. And then in this game, in that M disc specifically, she's now referred to as Yashan. And I wonder if maybe they've gone back on that, they're sort of retconning that. I mean, it's, it doesn't really count as retconning when the game isn't even out yet. But yeah, I think possibly they've decided, oh, that's. We don't want to follow that thread that we had before where it was going to be Shani and Shawnee and or maybe there was never going to be that thread and they realized, oh, that's going to be confusing. We've accidentally called her Shani and Shawnee is a name uh, in the game already. So I don't know. It, it might just literally be that they were going to do something with it and then they didn't or I, I don't know. I don't know what, what the plan is. Uh, what is this animal and where is it? It's out this way. Is it, is it up here? I've done the, I've done the Lucioles, haven't I? Because they would have shown up at the lighthouse. If, yeah, it's not that. Could be down there. Can I jump? No. Um. Why 
Well, I've been playing this in, uh, in my own time. I don't recall sort of forgetting it. Have I done one of, one of these? I, I didn't really forget a monster. I just got them all, or, or, or uh, an animal. I got them all without really thinking about it. Um, although it looks like that is branching off of that. I think it might actually be... Hmm. Yeah, potentially. Huh. Potentially it's back here, actually. Um, back down in that that hole again, um, down here. Like, is it, is it in here? Did I not? No, it's not here, but it's... I'm on the right level. Double H, please, get out of the... Oh no, I'm stuck. <gasps> oh my god, he's wedged me. Let me talk to him. Oh, there we go, I'm free. Um, in here? No. Where is that little, little area? Confused actually. Uh, let me head down this way. Maybe I didn't get a picture of the little. Uh, no. Um, no, this just leads us back round. is where that is it's definitely something that I just or normally would just take a photo of without without issue let me just make sure I've got all of these boys um, got that awaiting your orders got all of these that's fine Down the ramp where Paige got attacked by Crochax. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. So over... Th uh, which is over there, isn't it? Oh, of course, yeah. You can just turn right on this bridge. Well done, Ryan. Thank you very much. It's this little thing that sticks out. I remember. Thank you, Ryan. You have to be quick and catch it. A polypody amoeba? My compliments. I forget that that actually extends into the wall. Uh, brilliant. Well, that's that's that done. I suppose w literally while we're here, we may as well. I mean, we're, we're right there. We'll do the email. Take me literally an extra thirty seconds. Waiting your orders, Miss Jade. <laughs> And here's a little thing that I sort of didn't even know about because I've never needed to come come back here. But okay, so the first, I'll sh I'll tell you what I'm doing here, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But you come to this this area here, you hop across, and you climb up, and without moving, you get your camera out and you look vertically. So all you need to do, I'll tell you why in a moment, but what I was talking about before is if you come down here, I've never needed to come back here because I always take a photo of it, but the Tirolimax is just alive, and it's, where is it, and it just flies around, so if you ever need to come back and 
Because if you take a photo of it at the time during the boss fight and then it's dead, it's like, oh great, well I don't have a photo now and I can't complete my inventory of all the animals. Well, don't worry, it's not permanently dead. It still lives here. It goes on living. So why did I jump up that cliff and stick my camera in the air? Well, that's because there is a very strange, deep cut, bottom of the iceberg Easter egg in this game that was placed there by one of the developers literally is just a special secret treat for his brother. Not even a treat, just a secret message to his brother. It wasn't ever meant to be part of the the game or as part of the 100% completion or anything like that. And so the trigger to make it work is really kind of out of pocket and strange. So first you have to go to that cliff, climb up, after you've defeated the, the boss, I think, I think that's part of it. Climb up and without moving, get your camera out and look upwards. And that's all you need to do. That's trigger number one. Trigger number two is at the slaughterhouse. And trigger number three is in Ming Su's shop. So, anyway. We've, uh, we've done treasure hunt number two. Oh, so we do, we do need to go back to the Akuda bar, actually. I said we wouldn't have to, but um, given that we have to go back to Ming Su's as well, that, that's fine. So what we'll do is we will speed our way to, um, not the slaughterhouse, the, the factory, the Nutripills factory, which won't take long. Um, just over here. High. Right at the entrance, all you do is. Nope, I can't shoot Oops. here. It's no, I can't shoot here. It's too dangerous. Dock. I'm pressing dock. It's the same button as shoot. Is there any other recorded evidence of this mail other than your vod? Um, I think so. Yeah, I, th I think. I think there is recorded evidence other than my vod because I, f again, for context, for those who don't know, I did this, this email thing. Uh. Easter egg on the previous playthrough that I did of this uh, some months ago, and I have footage of me completing it. Um, but I, I believe there is. Uh, what do I want? Is it the electrical? No, I know where it is. Well, I can picture the room. I can't think whether this is the right direction. Yes, I think it is. It's the room where you get your triangle key. Um, however, I don't know if there's any evidence, video evidence, of what happens if you try and do it in this game. I know I'm not the only person to have tried it, but I think I might be the only person... Um, I, might be, I might be the first person to get video evidence of it if we do it on this playthrough. Um, I know... That I was possibly the first person to post about it on the internet, full stop, in this version of the game. Um, yeah. Oh. 16. 16. Uh, thank you for the bits there, Naked Statue. I can't I can't get there that way. I'm trying to think how you get there. Picture the room. It's where the little robots are. Um, you know what? Maybe we can't... Maybe it's too late. I might not be able to get back there, thinking about it. Uh, at this stage. Because we need to get back into the, the factory area. Um, where all the guards and, and things are. And I may have missed... I may have missed my opportunity. There's no point going down there. Yeah, and then everything else... Unless this lift still works, but I don't think it does. No. Or are they down here? Are they... Th oh, yeah, they are down here. Crisis over. Thank you, Naked Statue, again, for those bits there. 16. We're getting close. You know, the other day I actually worked out... I, I like, counted ahead to see what the what week it was that... Uh, yeah, it's in this room. Okay, there we go. I was worried for a minute there. 
Yeah. Right, we'll kill these boys. Happy 420 BBB blaze of my duty of 16 damn. Oh my, I can't believe I didn't have any summer jokes yet this year. So here they are, finally. What does a ghost use on a hot summer day to not get sunburned since Hi, why are teachers so rude during summer vacation? Because they have no class. Hi, which letter of the alphabet is the coolest in summer? Ice tea. Ho ho ho. What is a plastic surgeon's favorite activity at summer camp? Arts and crafts. Hi, hmm. Moggy heat wave. Moggy heat wave. It's 420, everyone. Blaze it. Um, this is the second area. You come into this room and look ver vertically. Given that there is absolutely no feedback as to whether you're doing yeah. it right, I like to go do it multiple times. Tiny Peter Pearl Treasure Hunting Blaze It. This is the true 106% run. If you're not doing the email. In your 106% runs, are you actually a Beyond Good and Evil fan? Uh, but yeah, this is pro possibly, or maybe even probably, going to be the first and only video evidence, until someone else does it, of uh, what happens if you try and do the email easter egg in this version of the game. Spoiler alert, something happens, but it's less exciting. <laughs> Uh, I'll just make sure I've got a Vorax while we're here, because, yeah, I have. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me, everyone, indulging me while I do silly things like this, like try and trigger an email that is of com is absolutely no consequence whatsoever. Uh, it's 420, everyone. Blaze it. Thank you for blazing it, Lord Brotovich and Stephen Scarylis, and for the bits, more importantly. Thank you for those. Um, so, that is email uh, requirement number two. Now what we can do is head to the town, head, head into the city. Um, scrape. Because in the city, we've got two things to do now. I forgot that we had to go back to the Akuda bar in the city. We've got to do the treasure hunt. Continue that. And I need to head into Ming Su's and get email trigger number three. And then that's it for email triggers until the moment that it happens. So I won't be doing any more silly running around and backtracking. Um, but hey, you want to be here to witness it when, when it's recorded on the internet for the first time, don't you? Yes, you do. Why are you saying you don't? You do. Yeah, less exciting than an email. Boring there. Um, right, what am I doing? Yes, into room... Two? What was it? Room three. Room one. No, it's not room one. It's just telling you that it's the Akuda Bar rooms. Or... Yeah, room one. In here. I know where it is. We saw it earlier. Why am I asking that? Right, so here's the chest. We go to the dream catcher. Uh, dream catch me. There it is. We have a look. And that is T6S4. We will definitely finish the treasure hunt today. I'll make sure of it. T6S4. That's what we'll focus on now. T6S4. It's going to be a fax, that's my guess, says Boring Mona. Okay, so let's get the cave ups. Oh, a chess piece. Translucent night chess piece for making strategic moves on the board, or for just admiring its crystalline beauty, or even for hiding codes underneath. Uh, we grab the cave ups, we grab the next little map thing, which tells us that we are going to the volcano, which we're going to anyway because Mo has tipped us off about a bunch of pearls up there. And uh, it's it's at the back of the volcano is where it is. Um, and there we go. About Uma. Um, so, where is there an MDIS? Oh, yeah, down here. No 
another character we've met in the promotional material for Beyond Good and Evil 2. In the second trailer, we met Uma. Out of all of us, my dear Paige, you know Uma the best. I know how much she means to you, and I hope that without her there as your anchor, you're doing okay. It's kind of space Not acupuncture. Not only was she Jade's auntie Uma to your uncle Paige, Aww. but she was the whole Garda's guiding light. I remember the sheer panic the crew fell into every time something unusual happened with Jade. How such a curious and wonderful creature Jade was to us. Mm. Her body growing up and out in all directions. Kind of a hint I there that like every day was an adventure. Weird stuff was happening with Jade when we she was a kid. We were lucky to have Uma with us. And Uma Not only for being wise, many, many questions. Was able to help. Showing her a path to tranquility with those graceful motions of meditation so she taught jade how to do the to not only opening cutscene jade, meditation but to help jade understand her true self and to love it all though it pains me to think back to uma's struggle with her personal demons oh those bad spirits of the past as she called them interesting her gift to jade brings me comfort and hope that beautiful interconnected web that catcher of dreams. Jade inherits from her Auntie Uma a way to fight our worst nature when it rises up and to chase away those deformed demons lurking in the shadows. I'm sure her gift must be a precious reminder of your cherished Uma and a talisman for Jade's future, far from the darkness. Uma was a teacher to us all, a protector and a friend. Paige, please be that for Jade. Hmm. Intriguing. So yeah, Uma is um, in the second trailer. Um, and she... Uh, whoops. She, uh, she does this little... You can see it in the first Out picture. Out of all of us. My dear Paige. That's like a, a medical treatment she's doing there. It's meant it was specifically d described by the team as sort of futuristic space acupuncture. And she uh she's putting these little needles in that have little LEDs on the back of them. They're sort of like little sci-fi needles. Um Right. Let's quickly run to Ming Tzu's and do email trigger number three. And then we're all good. We can go to the volcano. Oh, he's got his box. Ready? Where does it go? Excuse me, sir, what... What's with the box? Oh, it's gone. Uh, right, in here. It's somewhere in this little cubby. You just look up and down. I don't know exactly where. In the doorway. Hopefully that's enough. Pretty sure it's there. It's nowhere else, is there? Yeah. That's my understanding. I believe we've hit all three triggers now, and you have to do them in that order. And the first two you can't do until you defeated the bosses of those areas. So you have to defeat the Tarolamax before you do the one in the mine. And then you have to defeat the Reaper before you do the one in the uh, at the Nutripils factory. But the third one you can do just as soon as you've done the first two. I think you have to have done the first two before you do that third one, but um, maybe not. I think it's described as you can do this whenever you want, so I don't know. Uh, right, Black Isle. Where's the, where's the Beluga? Have I left it over there? I think I did, didn't I? I came in this way. Is that Jade's mum talking? Asks Insomnia Aaron. It's um, certainly Jade's mother figure. I don't think... We, we don't know. We don't know who it is. Uh, we don't know what the relationship is. She looks a lot like Jade in the first trailer. She's since been slightly redesigned. Um, but we will learn about her in, I think, the next... 
the next treasure hunt disc, or the one after that. So this is the volcano at the top of Black Isle. So we're here partly to get the treasure from the have to be very Krochax. They say the treasure is guarded by a colony of Krochax. But also to get the other treasure. Now, important here. Ah, yes. That's our final animal, I think, other Identified than the one that we can't get filed. yet. We've got one left? Yeah, one animal left. And it's not yet accessible. Uh, now, I'm going to save the game here because there is a... What seems to be a 100% consistent bug. Well, maybe not. I mean, all I know is lots of people have reported it. And I don't know how many people have reported that it hasn't happened to them. But there is a bug in this area that did not affect the original version of the game, but does affect this this one. Uh, where Double H will get caught on, on this ledge, and he will be unable to jump down. And I'm not really sure what the solution is other than... I think if you just... Um, actually, it doesn't really matter whether you save there now or not, but if he gets... So we're going to climb up here, and we're going to go and do some adventuring, and then we're going to have to back out of here, and I'll be running down here. I'll try and get in the hovercraft. I'll be like, Where, where's Double H? And he'll just be running back and forth up there, unable to climb down. Um, but I think the, the easiest solution is to come here, save the game, and then just load the game, and then he will be standing right next to you. So there's an easy fix, but it's not an easy fix when you're doing a speed run, which doesn't allow you to save and load. Um, but there is another, there's an alternate fix for that, actually. Uh, but the best thing would be if they just patched it. That would be the best thing, wouldn't it? Anyway. D-B-U-T-T. Don't break up the teeth. I won't, if you give me a whack. There we go. I can hear Crowchak's wings. Loads of pearls in this area, actually. Ooh. I mean, that's three immediately. Every Crochax is carrying a pearl, basically. Um, we're really getting there, actually. We've nearly got all the pearls, really. We've got some... Uh, Got some hovercraft racing to do and uh, a couple of um, looters caverns to access. And there's another very small Crochax nest. I think it's actually described as a Forex nest, which is a similar creature to a Crochax, but not one. Um, so the developers slightly got their own thing wrong there, but never mind. Okay, that's that done. Loot back around. Oh! Oh my god, they're smart enough to send in backup. There we go. A couple more pearls. Look out, Miss Jade, they're sending in more pearls for you to collect. Oh dear, how inconvenient. Right, we hop across here. And now we go left, past the big anemones. What's in the box, asked Lord Brotovich. We're about to find out. We'll time it just right, actually. I think just towards the end of the stream, in fact, probably before the end of the stream, we will finish the treasure hunt, which does have... It does have a nice reward at the end, actually. You know, the, the fact that... Along the way on the treasure hunt, we're getting little, like, special bits of art and voice acting. Um, and, you know, learning a little bit more about characters from an unreleased game. That's of interest to people who are into this game's universe and interested in the sequel, right? That's... But, you know, it's not... It's not super... Oh, Jesus. It's not super exciting just to, like, look at a bit of sketch work and listen to someone chatting. But... There is a bit more to it with the final, the final treasure. Like, more, more effort has gone in to the final reward than I perhaps expected. Have I looped around? No, there we go. Here's the final chest. You can already buy the stellar motor. I 
really wish they'd uh, not buggered up the, the sound effect levels for the Crowchacks in this game. I do, oh god, I do like the sounds that they normally would make, but it's all, it's all wrong. Anyway, here's five pearls. Always take pearls where you can find them, Carlson Peters, chapter 42, says in Somni Aaron. Yeah, so many pearls. 41. Right, so here is um, the final chest, but not the very final reward on the treasure hunt. We've got one thing to do once we've opened this final chest. Um, but if I head to the chest piece, um, L8H6. L... Eight, H, six. Enough to make a pearl necklace. Indeed. Look at this. Okay, digitalization terminated. It's a pirate compass, and you ro rotate it, expecting to find a code, and there isn't one. But it says, oddly shaped compass, glowing with a mesmerizing energy emanating from within. Looks like it could fit nicely in a machine in the lighthouse hangar. Hmm. And you don't even notice that when you're first in the hangar, but there is a hole uh, in a machine that that will go into. Um, so, disc, final disc about Callum. We're missing a disc there, um, but that is for, yeah, I know what that's for. It's the Mamago. Mamago disc. <laughs> So, Double H is now probably going to get stuck, but maybe not. He might surprise me. But I feel like it might just be a 100% consistent bug that needs fixing. Let's see. So he climbs up there, no worries. Comes along the bridge, absolutely fine. I unhook and come down here. Oh, they fixed it! Or it just doesn't affect everyone all the time. Hey, that's great. I shouldn't have even told you guys that there's a bug. I should have said, oh yeah, this game's flawless. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, oh, look. A Mecha Impulsor. Which I never buy. I only pick them up. So agile for a big guy. I know, with all that clunky armor on. Um, right. In we get. I'm actually missing one M disc from somewhere. I'm trying to think where that is. Am I? Oh no, I'm not. I know. I I understand. I, I get one for doing all the animals, which I've almost done. Got one animal left, and then the other one is for getting all the pearls, which I also need to also need to do. But I've almost done, and I get the final pearl or one of the final pearls for getting all the animals. So that will be the final thing that we do. Anyway, heading back to the lighthouse, we're going to go in with the beluga rather than with the hovercraft. You can come in through the roof. It's the same as accelerating the hovercraft. You've got It is. Um So this is it. This is what the treasure has been leading up to. We've got this compass and we've got the disc about Callum actually. We'll watch that first. But uh, I tell you, when I got to this point on my first run, not knowing what this treasure hunt was about, look if it's in there, I was like getting ri I was like, what is going to happen here? I was trying not to get too excited, but I thought something's going to happen. We're going to learn something about Jade or her family or something like that. Uh, right, about Callum. And then we'll do the final step. I could always tell Callum had a special place in Jade's heart. Callum is always so amazed. Jade's quote unquote dad, Paris. but he's like a <laughs> father figure, with her. not her real dad. He was one of the few who never treated her like a helpless thing, but as an equal. I remember them sitting for hours on end, locked in a game of chess, staring each other down with such quiet intensity, each one strategizing, 
Jade would always favor the night, Callum's birthday gift to her, making it easy for him to anticipate her next move. Wasn't it Primera Page who told Callum to be an indulgent dad and let Jade win on occasion? Primera, I'll tell it you about that in a minute. It took everything in his power to let Jade take his king, but seeing her wide grin as she screamed, checkmate, made it all worth it for him. Callum was a strict mentor, but strangely enough, That's it was Primera. An AI of all the things ship's computer. who taught him how to be a father figure to Jade, as I am her mother. Though I don't want Jade to get the wrong idea, look, make sure you tell her, Paige, nothing happened between us. <laughs> I'm just glad their bonding happened over chess and not Callum's preferred games of chance. Oh. We both know what that would have led to. One time, betting the Garda is certainly enough. Oh my god. But, if not for his engineering skills, I would have been a captain without a ship. It was thanks to Callum and the Mamogo clan that the Mamogo clan had a ship, a place to call home. And it was thanks to him that you and Jade had the beluga to fly to freedom. I know, when she holds that night, Jade thinks of Callum. Of the chess matches, the lessons, and the tough love. Callum can be seen playing chess against Primera, the ship's computer, in the second trailer of Beyond Good and Evil 2. He's a Scottish guy, actually. The whole, one of the whole, uh, kind of. Oh! Goodness me! Ocean Man! I've been covered up by the alert. Thank you, Fire Snout and Wheat. For raiding, welcome. We're just enjoying the treasure hunt of Beyond Good and Evil 2 Anniversary Edition. Getting very excited. Sort of explaining some of the references here to those who aren't so familiar. Um, has the monkey been shown yet? Yeah, we, the monkey was the first one. So you can check the VOD out on our VODs channel if you want to see uh, the, the disc about Nox. But um, yeah, Callum is in the trailer. Uh, one of the kind of the tenets of the design process of Beyond Good and Evil 2 is apparently having lots of sort of multiculturalism and all kinds of influences. And so Callum is this like Scotch guy and he wears um, tartan. Um, and Primera, the ship's AI, was named after the fact that the AI in this game, which takes place afterwards, is of course called Secundo, as in the second. So Primera is the first, Prime. So that's what the, the naming uh, convention is there, which is a nice little kind of... Yeah, that's almost a retcon in itself, in a, in a good way. Um, so, spoiler alert for anyone who doesn't want to see the final reward um, for placing this compass in here. But it's more than, it's more than an M-Disc with some artwork and voice acting. Let me tell you that. I didn't expect it to be this. Jade. It's a whole a green -eyed miracle. animated cutscene. My beautiful rebel. If you're seeing this, it means you and Paige have made it through. I never expected to record this, but then again, there's a lot of the unexpected in this life. For us pirates, even more so. We were supposed to stay together. You, me, the crew. Looking out for one another. But... It wasn't meant to be. That's now in the past. It's wild seeing, like... Your past. Jade animated in any kind of cutscene at all. Who you are. By now, I'm sure Paige has told you about us. You know, since the game about released. your Garda crew family. But... She's got the green eyes. Curiosity still isn't satisfied. Our fascinated and this was not in the original game, Stephen. This is a whole new cutscene. This character didn't even exist at the time. How much we love you. How much you mean to us. That's really all that matters. I hope you realize how nothing you could do, no distance between us, not even a million stars, would ever sever our bond. Each of these gifts, Paige passed on to you, comes from the crew, your family, 
I've sent them along as a testament to our love and as a reminder of your gift to us. Watching you grow up. There were times I didn't want to let you go. I wanted to keep you with me. But I know that to be truly free in this world or where you are now, you have to set your own course, make your own destiny, your own mistakes. My gift to you, this compass, let it be an enduring connection to me and to your past life of piracy. Though I'm not there to share your new life with you. You have to imagine they, they're going to make it. They are, they are going to make Beyond an Evil 2. They've gone to this effort, which, all right, probably didn't take that long, but there's a level of commitment here. Remember us all. Remember. Sadly, the voice actor for Jade in this game um, is no longer with us, so that's probably partly why she doesn't say anything in in that uh, cutscene. Not that you, the hologram could talk back to you, but you know you think you might at least have her sort of gasping or whispering to herself, you know. Um, so that is uh, what was added to this. Um, this remaster of the game, a treasure hunt, you learn about some of the characters from the the prequel that's in development. Um, and that is Jade's, possibly her actual biological mother. It's a bit, it's still a bit ambiguous. She look, they have visual similarities. They've got the green eyes and stuff. And in Callum's M disc, she says, "Oh yeah, he was her father figure," implying he's not her actual father. He was her father figure, as I am her mother. Does that mean as I am her mother, he's as much her father as I'm her mother? Or is it like, I'm her actual mother, just as much as he is her father figure? Dunno, it's still, it's not totally uh, clear cut. I think she probably is her biological mother, but I'm not, I don't know. It's the same as accelerating the hovercraft. You've got the fire button and even the retro rockets. None of the army's ships are equipped with it. Hmm. He was meant to say that when I first got in the Beluga, but he didn't. Um, Insomnia Aaron asks, where are they all, all these characters? Well, uh, as we learn in the M-Disc that was in the original game, that Paige gives you, he says, we got into some trouble with the authorities, so we all had to split up for our safety um, back in the day. So it's implied that basically they either got in trouble just because of their piracy antics with, you know, law enforcement uh, or maybe they got in trouble with the actual alpha sections and the doms um, it's not uh, it's not fully explained but you know stuff that can be explored in later later games or the later the, the, the next game right so we've got a couple of pearls left and then that's it we've got some um the uh, left. Oh yeah, over here. This is a looter's cabin. DNA test all round. Someone's due child support payments. Yeah. Maneuver not allowed. Collision risk high. Um, why not have her Captain Laserhawk voice up to step in to record some lines to fill in the blanks? Well, I think it might be a bit weird for her in this game to have a different voice just for like two lines. I think they just thought there's no need for her to... She didn't need to speak in that cutscene anyway. And certainly if she appears in uh, the prequel, she's, she definitely appeared in the trailer of it, so I assume she's going to appear in the prequel itself. Uh, they'll they'll recast her, you know. They're not going to have her not speak in there. Um... But, uh, yeah, I think they just thought, hey, we'll make a cutscene. She stands there, listening intently. Um, I think it works fine. I think it would be distractingly strange if uh, she did speak in that cutscene and it was a different voice. Because a lot of people wouldn't know that the voice actor is, uh, has passed away. Oh, 
bonk. Unfortunately, I haven't set another spark off yet. Oh no! I have now. Can I get there in time with the boosts? No. Almost certainly not. No! Gotta wonder how good the next game would be. History's shown that games that stay in development for any longer, uh, for, for longer, often lead to not good games. E.g., Newton Forever, Suicide Squad, Killer Justice League. No, you're absolutely right. It's it's a, it's a huge concern. Um, all the evidence tells us, or all the the history and the stats tell us that it's not going to be a good game. Um, it's not necessarily the case that every game that's ever had a really long development time is. Uh, has been has been bad, but yeah, it it tends to be the case. Um, I do think though that maybe there's some solace and, and uh, consolation to be found in the fact that, for what it's worth, I think the game has been fully restarted multiple times. Um, you know, even since we've seen it, I think there are reports that it may have been restarted once or twice internally even since we saw it in 2017 um, but certainly it, it is actually I, I don't think uh, I don't think this is unfair to say uh, it is arguably incorrect to say that this uh, that Beyond Good Evil 2 holds the world record for longest game in development which is what is touted by a lot of journalists and, and other people um we're told, oh yeah, um, it's the longest in development game. You know, it was announced in 2008, and it's and here we are now. You know, it's it's been nearly like 20 years. That's not strictly true. There was a beyond a game called Beyond Good and Evil 2 announced in 2008. That is absolutely true, but it was a sequel featuring Jade and Paige and Double H. You are now leaving territory. And it was it was cancelled and. It was completely canned. So, yeah, in name, Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been in development for nearly 20 years. But the actual project uh, was started and then completely gotten rid of. Um, and what we're expecting now from, from Ubisoft in the next f five years... Uh, is an entirely different project to that one. So, you know, depending on how bogged down you want to get in semantics, um, it's not necessarily been that long. Okay, so through here, there's um, a final... Oh, we don't have any ho hovercraft races left to do, actually. I've just realized we did them all. Um, whoops. So we've got a, a final, much smaller Forex or Crochax nest to do. We'll get, I think, just one pearl out of it, actually, from this guy. Crochax mistake! He's getting away with a pearl! You can actually call extra security robots because you need them to break this thing. You can tell on yourself. Say, hey, I'm here. Come and get me. Uh, Doom 16 was restarted multiple times as well. Oh, was it? Yeah. Prey 2 and Prey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Prey 2 was meant to be a direct sequel to Prey 1, if you want to get serious about this. It was announced. It was shown off. It looked really good. It was changed multiple times in development. And then eventually, Prey came out, um, which was a completely different game. It's just like that. It is just like that. Um, so, it might not be terrible. It probably will be. Even if the game was literally announced in, say, 2019 and then released in 2022, 2023, you know, which is not a, an unusual length of time for de development these days, it, it could still be bad, you know, with absolutely... No, uh, it, not not in any relation to its development time, but just because it's a modern, by the looks of it, RPG by Ubisoft, 
uh, with potentially all sorts of features in it that we don't necessarily need. You know, it might just be bad by... Oh. I'm too good at killing these robots. I can't actually get it to where I need it to be. If I just come and stand here, it'll just walk over and do half the work for me. Don't hit it, Double H. Let it, let it come this way. Yeah, so it might just be bad, you know, by design. I mean, I don't mean intentionally, but... It might just be a bit rubbish. Oh, there's three pearls. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, towers to climb, potentially. I mean, apparently Star Wars Outlaws doesn't have... Uh, it's not packed with map markers. So, hey, maybe if... Um, I, can I kill this boy? Oh, I can. Oh. Uh, maybe if they've learned some lessons and they're trying to not do too much of an Ubi world with upcoming Ubi worlds, then um, things might be a bit better, but I don't know. It sounds like if the game is ever going to come out, that they're really going in on it. And that's partly why they're spending uh, so much time on it and so much money on it and why they refuse to cancel it even though it's been going for so long. Is the one who's going to be happy. Indeed. Um, so for that reason, you know, that that worries me in a way because if, if Ubisoft are saying, no, look, like if, if and when we can finally actually finish this really overambitious project, it could be really lucrative for us. That's not necessarily a good thing. I don't like Ubisoft when they're being a business. I want them to be a bunch of interesting artists who are making fun stuff for the sake of it, which I know no studio really does anymore, or no, none of the big ones do anymore. Um, but yeah, it would be nice if that was the mentality rather than, how can we make this thing incredibly lucrative? I mean, I suppose it would have to be a bit good if, it, if you know they really wanted it to make money, but yeah, it would also, in their mind, it would have to have all sorts of microtransactions and whatever else in it. Um, so, I don't know. Right, I'm heading straight over here. Uh, or maybe that is... I keep forgetting everything we've done. Is this, um... Is this the hovercraft races? What? Now leaving territorial waters. Final warning. It is actually. I think we've still got hovercraft races to do. Not allowed. Collision risk high. In which case, hang on, how many boost capsules have I got? Oh, I've got 29. That's fine. Okay, well, it's either hovercraft races. Oh, yeah, I don't think we did race four, did we? Or th three. Yeah, no, we didn't. We didn't do it. We've not done these races. Because we went straight into the slaughterhouse, didn't we? So that's why. Yeah, life service beyond an evil. I don't know if that's intended to be a joke, forgotten media, but I think that is actually what it's going to turn out to be like. I would love a psych. Psych Odyssey style documentary on the making of Beyond and Evil 2 and everything that's gone on over all, all these years, yeah. I'm not aware of Psych Odyssey, but yeah. Um, hey, we've had uh, we've had the biggest change to, or the biggest addition to Beyond and Evil 20th Anniversary Edition today in the treasure hunt and the, the cutscene that that they put, like, time and effort and money into. Uh, we've had that in today's stream, but we're also going to have another inter oh, another interesting change um, when we complete the hovercraft races. Now, here's, here's a pop quiz. But I don't expect any of you to know the answer to this, but uh, let's see if anyone in the chat knows. What, what does Double H ordinarily say when you complete race number four and win the Hovercraft Championship in this game? What does he say as you cross the line instead of yeehaw? What's his line of dialogue? The answer... 
is is something along the lines of oh yes great we're the champions miss jade uh something like that and he's so excited he says we have to prove our worth miss jade Ooh. they don't look overly friendly he says oh we did it miss jade oh yes shut up shut up announcer he says oh we did it miss jade oh i could kiss you and then jade sort of laughs in a kind of you know uh uh what's the word um she's kind of you can tell she's going whoa whoa she's taken by surprise but not in a way that she doesn't sound like it was like really unwanted or unwarranted it doesn't sound like he assaulted her it sounds like they have a platonic relationship I didn't even uh, think of it as a kiss on the mouth. I don't think it is. I think it. I always assumed it was a little kiss on the cheek. But uh, in the original version of the game, they crossed the line. Double H says something like, "We're the champions, Miss Jade." Oh, I could kiss you, and she goes, <laughs> "Yikes!" kind of thing. In this version, that line has been edited because. We shouldn't be kissing ladies without saying, may I kiss you? You can say I could kiss you if you then follow up and say, would that be all right? Uh, or at least if you read the vibes and it's very much the case that the lady is, is interested. So, are we ready to uh, witness Double H being cancelled in real time for sexual assault charges? Listen, no mention of kissing. But she still says oomph. <laughs> she goes, ooh. <laughs> we won the championship. Oh, I could kiss you. No, no, no. So there you go. That's the kind of director's commentary I have in my head for a game that I didn't work on, but I know like the back of my hand. We're the champions, Miss Jade. Oh, I could give you a consensual high five, suggests Mr. Black. Yeah. Double H has that girl back at base. I know the cat girl. Yeah, who they may or may not be a thing. I'm not sure, to be honest. So, there we go. That's all of the pearls except for one. Which we're going to get right now. Fly to Mamagos. What time is it? Yeah. Well, we've timed this right. I can tick off all my final pearls. We've got our pearl hunt. We'll then get a, the final M disc as well. We've got two M discs left, which we're going to get back to back. Um. And then uh, we'll, we're ready for the final act of the game, which I'll have to sort of stretch out a little bit, try and make it last two hours <laughs> next week. Because uh, it's probably only about an hour's worth of gameplay left, but um, as good as new, and the installation is included, Jade. Don't let an occasion like this one get away from you. It's fine. The accent is fine. This is a Stella motor, Mamago branded. We can install it onto the Beluga and get into actual space to fly to the moon to save everyone who has been taken by the Doms and to expose the doms on the alpha sections to the rest of Hillis by taking the final set of incriminating photos. So. Hiya, Hal. Here, Jid. Still a motor. Almost new. With that, you could get yourself out of a black hole. Almost new. Second hand, though. There we go. Pop it in. Worst case scenario, we can geo-guess. Yeah, indeed. Nice job, Yeet. There it is. Stella motor. Installation is included. So, that's it. We've cleared out Mama Goes. We've got all of their kit. Hey, Jed, where you been hiding? Let's go. You might think, Peter, I thought you're doing an inventory of everything of all the animals on Hillis. 
hope this motor of yours has some kick to it, Mama Go. You've got one animal left to get, so why are you trying to leave Hillis? And you've got pearls to get. Why are you leaving Hillis when there are pearls and animals and M discs to get? Hey, okay. it all happens in one go. We're going to activate the stellar motor. And whilst we're still in the upper atmosphere or gravitational pull. Omega Dipper? Hillis, all there? I'll tell you. We're surrounded by stars, Double H. So within the bio, you know, the, the ecosystem of Hillis, is this comet that's firing blocks of ice. Interesting comet. Stellar motor is backfiring. Almost new, he said. Rhino. Almost new. Uh, shoot at the ice. As you can see, there's something inside it. It's a space whale. We've released it. It's the final animal. And it's only, for some reason, worth, like, 300 credits. Perfect. I'll date and file it. Oh, 800. Okay, that's a reasonable amount. But we've we've been paid, like, two grand before. So there we go. That's the final animal. Okay. Your roll of film is finished. Good. I'll transfer a M disc to you, Jade. Well done, Yeet. Congratulations. Thanks to you, the species inventory is now complete. And we've got an uh, M disc uh, for animal species. Um, hang on a minute. The stellar motor has to hold out till we get to the moon. Our mission depends on it, Miss Jade. It does. Um, I was thinking I uh, I need a. Have I got all the Have I got all the pearls? So we can, you, fortunately, you can fly back down onto the planet. Um, but the final M disc you get for just collecting every pearl. And I, I, I was thinking then that like, oh well, I'll get a pearl for filling in a roll of film, which is what you normally get. But she just sends you the M disc, and that's it. So um, I need to check whether I've missed a pearl. I haven't. Is it just in my inventory now? Final M disc. I need to check. It might just be in the inventory. Um, because it's the last thing we need to sort out before we get our 106%. Animal species. Where's that picture of the fly that I took on the first the first stream? Uh Where is the fly? You guys are probably staring at it. You can see it, and I can't. Oh, there. Oh, no, it wasn't that. Was it the red fly? Oh, I thought I took a photo of... I took a photo... Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I took a photo of something, and, like, Paige was just in the background looking weird. Seagull. Fish, loose heels, eel. That's a good one. I think it was a photo of the fly that I'm thinking of, but it's just been cropped off by this uh, this screen. Or oh, I, I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. There we go. That's all the all the photos. Um, have I got all the pearls? There are none showing up on the map. Info. Eighty-eight. It might just be in my inventory, the M disc, but I thought you normally get uh, like an email or something saying, hey, you've got every pearl. Nice job, Jade. Um, I don't know, maybe not. Okay, I've, I've collected every pearl. Um, it might just be here in my inventory. Have I got every M disc? Yeah, pearl game. So I've now got all the M discs. That's it. We've collected everything we can collect. All that remains is a point of no return. 
and um, God, that's loud, that music, and uh, a bit of story stuff. Uh, this game is tricky. You control each pearl independently with two thumbsticks. And uh, you have to get 140,000 points, which, if you look at the score in the top right, I mean, it does get faster and faster as you go, but, uh, you know, it takes a long time. And uh, Ashton Matthews really struggled with this. Oh, well, no, sorry. Ashton's Ben really struggled with this, and they had to play it together with one thumbstick each. Uh, I, on the other hand, had to torture myself to, to get it on my own, and it wasn't easy. It took a while. Um, I'll wait until I die and then uh, that's it, we'll end the stream. But there we go, so that is, um, other than, you know, finishing off the story and looking at the post credit scene, that's kind of everything there is to know about the Younger Than Evil 20th Anniversary Edition. All the stuff that's been added, all the stuff that's been changed, all the bugs, um, how to get 100%. We'll get 106% uh, when we finish the the email uh, Easter egg on the next stream. Assuming I've done all the triggers right. Um, I know I'm making this look really easy, but it's not. Um, it gets faster and faster. The score goes up faster, but so does the speed of the pearls. you have a number of lives and you do actually farm lives very quickly in this game but you also go through them really quickly so oops best thing to do is to get yourself get both pearls together and then when you get up to the top left stay there it looks like you're going to be hit but I don't think no you don't get hit here oh wait no says. No, it's later that you go up to the top. You're going to get hit now, right. You get together. Follow it round. Right, and then you wait until the whole structure starts moving together, which it does now. Oh! And then... Oh no, I just bonked. But yeah, getting the trophy for that is uh, it's a tricky one, especially when it gets really quick. But anyway, that's your pearl. Bite you some mama go, apparently. Um, and that's it. So, um, I'll save the game. And then when we come back next week, we'll hop in the beluga, we'll head to space. And we'll save the flipping world. That's what we'll do. Save the flipping world. Amazing. We've got all of our treasure hunt. Uh, discs there. We learn about some of Jade's friends and family from Beyond Good Evil 2, a game that's not even out yet, but we met some of the characters in, a, in, in trailers and stuff. It's all very exciting. Um, and now that this game is out, this anniversary edition, there's very little left for me to get excited about and obsess over and uh, talk ad nauseum about on streams and podcasts when when it comes to Beyond Good and Evil, because, um, you know, while, while this was in the works, I was able to sort of, you know, get excited about all the leaks that were happening, like, oh, you know, this this thing's come out, and oh, some insider says there's an anniversary coming, and the trailer's ready for it, all that kind of thing. The game's out now, and I've enjoyed it, and I'm, you know, I'm glad it exists. The gallery's great. Maybe we'll look at the gallery next week, um, after we finish the game. But... Now we're just back to where we were, which is that Beyond Good and Evil 2 
sort of exists as a project that's in development and Ubisoft keeps saying, no, we are still making it. They don't even, it's not even like it's radio silence. It's like long periods of radio silence. And then they say, no, no, we're still, we're still working on it. And that's all you get. Um, so yeah, big fans of this uh, IP like me are now back to where we were before, which is um, waiting for the the sequel or the prequel or whatever you want to call it, waiting for that to come out. Will it happen? Who knows? It sounds like they've invested a lot of time and money into it, so I feel like it probably will, but I won't believe that truly and fully until I'm sitting down with a controller in my hand and pressing new game. So there we go. Join me next week for the conclusion to this. We will sort out the email Easter egg and you guys can see it how and why it's different in the anniversary edition of the game but other than that we're just wrapping things up enjoying the story and all of its glorious new 4k 60 fps um i don't think i'm playing at 60 fps actually but uh yeah the the lovely new crisp sexy version with all the lighting and rescored music and um yeah we can we can uh, enjoy the the conclusion of the story together and a bit of the gallery and stuff and that's it. So thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your Mondays and enjoy the rest of your weeks. Stay safe and stay cool in this heat. I'm very warm now and I'm going to go and have a nice cold drink and my dindins. Lovely. All right, um, I'll catch you all next week and on Thursday as well for the joint stream, Blaze It. Uh, I hope you have a good time, whatever it is that you're doing in the meantime. Lovely. All right, um, bye everybody. <laughs>